All in all, it's been a pretty nice afternoon across Kelo land and the evening will follow suit. In fact, even as we head into the night, we're going to be doing pretty well for ourselves. 40s to around 50 for overnight low temperatures, partly to mostly clear skies will be in place. East River, we're going to be doing pretty well for the day tomorrow as well as we get back into the 70s. But out to the west, yes, we're warmer, but we're more unsettled as well. We'll talk about that and the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in a little bit. But until then, first at four starts right now. From Killaland Media Group. Killaland News, first at four. Coming up, three people are dead after a shooting in Centerville. And the suspect is a former community leader. We'll have the latest on the case. Plus, another semi gets stuck under a train bridge in Pierre. We'll tell you what we know. And it might be the cheesiest competition you've ever witnessed. I'm Ian Lee with the folks willing to risk life and limb for a wheel of cheese. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First Step 4. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. A former Centerville mayor is behind bars this afternoon, accused in a shooting that left three people dead. 64-year-old Jay Ostrom is being held in the Minnehaha County Jail on a $1 million cash-only bond. Kelloland News has obtained an affidavit in the case, which details the incidents leading up to the deadly shootings on Main Street. The document says last night a family member told Ostrom that she had been sexually assaulted by a neighbor and Ostrom, quote, got up and went raging out of the house. When police later found him, authorities say that Ostrom had a gun in his pocket along with a rifle casing and shotgun casings. And he also had an air style rifle nearby. Ostrom was also a city council member in Centerville and has a history of working in law enforcement. We will have the latest on the investigation tonight on Kettle Land News. Two men are behind bars accused of stabbing a third man in northwest Sioux Falls over the weekend. 53-year-old Anthony Wayne and 36-year-old Derek Taylor are both charged with aggravated assault. Police say that it happened just southwest of the airport around 4.15 Saturday afternoon. Authorities say that they believe one man held the victim down while the other stabbed him. The victim suffered wounds to his chest, neck, and head. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A Midland, South Dakota woman has been identified in a deadly crash south of Fort Pier last week. Authorities say it happened in the area of War Creek Road and 286th Avenue around 1 o'clock Friday. A car was westbound when it went into the ditch. It rolled and stopped on its passenger side. The driver, 63-year-old Barb Ann Stozer, died from her injuries. The South Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating the crash. One man suffered minor injuries after a motorcycle crash south of Lead on Memorial Day. The uh, Lead Volunteer Fire Department says that it happened just before 9 o'clock last night. Arriving crews found the man had been thrown from his motorcycle after hitting a deer on the highway. Officials say that he was wearing a helmet. In Pier, the train bridge over Pier Street has added another semi to its collection. Uh, yesterday, the fully loaded cattle trailer made it more than halfway under the bridge before it got stuck. A second cattle trailer was brought in to haul the animals away. The Huron man was given a warning for a truck route violation. Northbound Pier Street was closed for around 90 minutes. Wow, that uh, bridge has collected a few semis over yeah, the years. Yeah, it's seen it? a few crashes in its day. Yeah, all right, let's get a look at our weather forecast. Saw some sunshine today after kind of a wet weekend there. Adam. It was a beautiful afternoon and we had a couple of showers in the morning, but now the sun was able to move on in and we've been treated to a pretty nice second half of the day really across the entirety of the area. And that starts with our view from our camera at Falls Park. A great afternoon to get outside if you can. 70 north wind at 11 miles per hour. Just some fair water clouds above the city. And that is really just about it. That's as close to a 10 out of 10 sort of afternoon in Sioux Falls as you can get. And we're also looking good out west. There's a view from our camera in Deadwood. Crystal clear skies above. Just a nice breeze out there to make it feel a little more comfortable. We're at 66, though, in Warmington, Aberdeen at 68.74 for Chamberlain, as well as Pier. We'll throw in Rapid City as well, 72 in Spearfish, 65, though, as you head toward Custer, 64, Sisseton, Watertown sitting at 63. It's been a bit breezy at times at 10 to 15 miles per hour in many locations in central and eastern Kelloland out of the north, so it's been a cooler breeze. Out to the west, kind of light and variable at times, trying to come out of the east as we go through the rest of the afternoon. But yeah, there is just absolutely nothing 
going on right now for miles across Kelowind. At least not beyond the aforementioned fair weather clouds that have been billowing up, but there really is just no instability to support anything else beyond that. For now, as we head toward tomorrow, that's going to change, but even then, it's not for everybody. Beautiful weather for southeastern and northeastern Kelowland, for that matter, on Wednesday, with temperatures mainly in the low to mid-70s. But as we head farther to the west, we do have the potential for showers and thunderstorms to fire up, and a couple of those storms may be strong to severe. It's also going to be warmer out that way, as we on either side of 80 in many areas. We'll talk about that and go through the rest of your seven-day forecast as we head through the hour. Thanks, Adam. As the school year comes to a close, many kids are looking forward to summer, but for some students in southwestern Iowa, their plans look a little different because of a tornado. Katrina Markle with our CBS affiliate in Omaha explains. It looks like a typical end of the year party here at Tri-Center Community Schools, and in a lot of ways it is, but there's more going on under the surface. I'm your Southwest Iowa neighborhood reporter, Katrina Markle, and I'm here because this is where a lot of the kids who were displaced by the Minden tornado go to school. Snow cones and pizza were on the menu for the last day at Tri-Center, but for the students and staff who went through the Minden tornado, it's going to be a different summer. I sat down with faculty and students to check in four weeks after the storm. 10-year-old Easton Haggerty loves baseball, but the Minden ball fields are gone. What are your plans this summer? Moving into a new house, going to the Creighton Blue Jays baseball game, playing with friends. Well, I'm most happy about moving into a house because I don't want to live in a hotel anymore. Michelle Huber, the school counselor, and Jean Johnson, the social studies teacher, also lost homes. I feel like our kids are super resilient and probably handle it better most days than I do. Being with the kids has actually been a very positive thing for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous next week, you know. Superintendent Angela Huseman says now is when it gets harder. We are looking and every time you go into Minden, you see all the houses with tarps on the roofs and you see trees that have no leaves and now you're looking at the long haul. And speaking of long hauls, she's been driving to Carter Lake, approximately 40 miles, to pick up Easton and his brother for school. It's like one big family. <laughs> we are, yep. It's stressful for the kids, too. I've lived in Minden my whole entire life, so everything that's been there and it's all just destroyed. It's just kind of like guilt that like some of your friends don't have, like aren't living there anymore, but like your house was still okay. But this day, the pain is put aside and this community can smile before they get back to work. I'm really grateful that everybody came together and helped everybody through this. At Tri-Center Junior Senior High outside Neola, I'm your Southwest Iowa neighborhood reporter, Katrina Markle.